so I'm gonna start off with drying out my hair. I'm just gonna do it straight. It's mostly dry, but um, just to kind of get that out of the way, I'm gonna use my Dyson Airwrap. This is in the Vinca Blue Rose Limited Edition shade. Definitely not a how to dry your hair tutorial or how to use this attachment in here. One of the things that I like about the Dyson Airwrap is how quick I can get my hair dry. And like I did say beforehand, I did have my hair semi-dried um, already. Whenever your hair is fully wet and you're using the air wrap to style your hair, it just makes everything so much quicker. One drawback for me is the curling barrels. It doesn't really hold the curl for me, but my hair is just naturally so straight that I think it's that. Even if I use like a styling mousse or a serum, it still kind of just falls very quickly. So I just use it mainly for the brush and the comb attachment, as well as the regular drying attachment and then the roller. I just find that whenever I do use the two barrel much so waste my time on that. So I do use it only for those other attachments. It's not so much of a bummer because the whole reason why I got the Dyson air wrap was because I needed a hair dryer. So it's pretty much still a hair dryer and everything else that comes in the package is just a bonus. Yeah, it does have a hefty price tag, but it's still a nice device and it doesn't really damage your hair the way traditional heat styling tools will. So got the hair out of the way. Now let's do the makeup. And um, I did want to ask, do any of you have the new Dyson Air Straight Straightener? Out of all the Dyson products that I have yet to acquire in my collection, not that I want to have it, all of them, but I am intrigued by the Corral Straightener just because you don't have to have a cord with it. And I feel like you can travel with it just fine and to be able to straighten and curl your hair as well. And now the Air Straight, the new one, it's not something that I feel like I would benefit from because it's just purely drying your hair. And I already have this guy and this guy was expensive as it is. And that one is too. But however, if you do have an experience with this, let me know what that was like. I'm just gonna take my Indalee Cold Q10 toner and just spritz some of that onto my face. This is so refreshing and I'm just going to pat it down. I've used this product a few times now and I like it so far and it's just literally like three spritz and that's all you need. I do have a sample of the Makeup Forever foundation, tired skin, and then also their concealer. So I'm just gonna use both and see what I think. Going to grab my A Cosmetics Dual Brush. This is their complexion, and I'm gonna use a precision in with my Charlotte Tilbury Corrector in the shade two. This is pretty much the first step to my makeup routine, and I'm almost out of this one. So let me know if you also use a corrector, which one is it that you're using, and if you like it. So how's your day so far? I hope that it's going great. I feel like I haven't been as productive as I would have liked for a weekend. I am waiting for my husband to get off of work so that maybe we can go out for dinner all day i pretty much just spent it at target like oh my god we're target i don't really go into target and it's not because i don't like it it's just i generally would go for groceries or house stuff i find that their home decor while is amazing it looks small in my home so i really do need to look at different places for home decor and ask for food pretty much since the pandemic we've had our groceries delivered weekly and i haven't really had to go to target yes i've been since the pandemic obviously it's not like the store that i go to often but i I went there and I literally was there for like two hours. For like two hours. I grabbed a lot of food and I did get about $110 worth of clothing items. So not too terrible, but I ended up spending $360. Like where did that go? What's going on? I mean, I am going on a weekend trip, so I did have to get a lot of like the travel minis, but still, can I say that I spent that much money on travel minis like no i didn't like i felt like it was so expensive and whenever i do groceries every week it's not even remotely close to that or even half the price of what i spent at target so do you like target do you typically go and overspend or are you someone who has a list and sticks to it like what kind of shopper are you also i had a grocery list i left it i ran out of the house because i needed to go drop off something at the post office and they do close early but this was very early in the day it was like around 
10 in the morning, I want to say. About 10.45ish in the morning, I made it to Target. A lot of it was food and like essentials that I need from the house, but I just thought that was so expensive like compared to my local grocery that I use on a weekly basis. Like that is exactly why I don't shop at Target. It's crazy. They do have a lot of good stuff and they have a lot of amazing brands and whatnot, but still it's like what happened i'm gonna grab my mac prep and prime a lip put it in my lips and have it sit there while i do the rest of my makeup i totally need to get like a magnifying mirror that i can have here at my desk if you have one that you love let me know what brand that is i was gonna do my concealer but i'm actually gonna go in with the foundation sample that i have so i'm almost wondering if this is the exact same formula is just like marketed as foundation versus concealer so the foundation it does say that it is brightening smoothing firming hydrating and evens out your skin tone while the concealer does say it is a velvet matte or a matte velvet i read that backwards i guess that tells me that this is going to be more matte and this is going to be more like a satin finish so let me get on with the foundation and the shade that i'm going to be using today i really want to use the y225 but i think i'm going to go with y315 the other two are a little bit darker for me to give it a go so according to sephora the shade 3y15 that i'm going to be using today is color sand and it's tailored for lighter medium skin with neutral undertones i'm just going to use it all last time that i had a little sample i was able to use it for two days and it's a little greasy oily look at that so far i've been loving this brush it's one of the newer brushes to my collection this is by hourglass it is their foundation brush so i'm just going to take some in here but anyways back to my target story i got these water wipes and i brought them because i was just so stunned it was a pack of three and it was on sale actually let me put this down and tell you this story i um grabbed these from the shelf i was just gonna get that one pack that it was 3.99 i believe but i saw this that it was on sale for seven dollars and 25 cents and usually this is a 15 dollars i'm gonna show you and look at how much i ended up paying for these wipes literally full price moral of that story just grab what you're in there for and go don't even get sucked in by these little as is price tags and it wasn't even just it was one there was a few on the shelf so i was like oh okay fine i'll grab this three for the price of two why not but joke was on me so this color now that i'm putting it on of course it's not fully blended but it looks a little bit too dark for me just a tad bit dark let's see if i can lighten it up on the camera it looks good but keep on blending it feels oily on the skin it says that it is a active caring foundation that has a combination of makeup and skincare so i guess that's where the greasiness or the oiliness comes from it says 85 percent of women feel as if their skin has been energized and revitalized after four weeks of use interesting i am a full coverage either matte or like a demi matte foundation lover i don't know if i'm gonna like this hopefully it wears beautifully and for a long time before it starts separating but so far i'm not really convinced and it could also be the sample like i showed you it did have a little bit of oiliness or separation to it there's actually a lot left in the little cup here so i'm gonna give this a go for the next few days and see if i change my mind on it and if i do i will update you in the description bar i'm not gonna judge the color the color looks fine on camera which is a little bit dark actually if you look at my neck i want to say that it does blend so well into my skin that it doesn't really look like i have foundation like it just looks like i have a moisturizer on because of the whole you know hydrating part it does kind of look like my actual face is sweating but it still looks very natural it's quite interesting as far as the coverage is concerned it's not medium like i can still see a lot of my actual skin pigments like let me bring you up closer all right so i have some spots right here that you can still see peeking through the actual foundation and then of course like my mole here usually some foundations will blur it out much more but this one is still very profound like it still looks like skin it's pretty cool like the amount of coverage that it has and has provided like if i look at my skin in the camera it does look pretty even even though you can still see it in person like it's quite interesting but it doesn't look like a foundation that's gonna be long wearing 
and that's something that I primarily look for in my foundations. But like for like an everyday foundation, like if you are just out and about doing random stuff, like not so much seeing a lot of people to where you need to be flawless and presentable a lot of the time, it's fine it's definitely not one i would consider for like my wedding or um for any special event definitely not one for pictures i mean or what do you think i can still see a lot of imperfections in my actual skin again it just looks like a moisturizer over my skin which is not a bad look because it's still covering which a moisturizer with zero coverage would not be doing so it's still nice and like i said it does kind of look like i have something like it looks very healthy in a way I do have a lot in that sample of the, the Y315 and then two I have the Y225 which is for light skin tones with golden undertone. If I run out of that one, I still have two or three wears of this other color to give it a try and not so much dismiss it. But first impressions, it looks interesting on the skin. So the concealer, it has two in here. I'm really leaning towards the 2.31 but I'm going to do the 3.2 and then this 3.2 concealer is name sand so just like that 3y15 foundation is name sand this one is as well according to sephora this color it's for medium complexions with a yellow undertone so let's give that one a try and knowing that this is going to be a matte formula i think i'm going to like the actual concealer itself but over this other foundation i don't think it's a perfect match because i can just anticipate that over time it's going to just look like a matte patch right under my eyes and then everything else is going to be like dewy and i don't i don't know i'm just i think i'm gonna like the concealer i just don't know how it's gonna work out with this particular foundation all right so i'm just gonna take the same brush that i was using for my corrector just dip it in that sample so i'm gonna do a dab here another one here and then i'm gonna do just here just because i want a little bit more coverage i'm not gonna lie on that piece it does kind of look like it's a little bit darker than the actual foundation foundation that I just put on even though it's the same color like color name I don't know how I feel about this but again it was a sample and if I would have gone to the counter to actually color match that would have worked out much better but I can definitely work with it and fix it should have definitely tried the other color but we're here now so let's just blend it so that it melts into the skin i'm actually going to go into that uh, 2.3 concealer shade and see if i can rescue what's going on in my face a little bit so same brush just one small dab and it picks up a lot of product because those are very densely packed with actual product to sample so i'm just going to do a dab there and a dab there and then just going to blend it away so i can say that this concealer does cover up nicely under the eyes and even though i layered two and still pressed on the powder in other concealers like once you pressed it on way too much it'll remove or the product would move but this actually it, it worked very nicely and i think it could be because of the formula being matte and i think i fixed my makeup happy about that so now that i have a nice a gradient effect going on i think i rescued my makeup so i'm gonna go in with my kosa's um cloud set powder this is in the shade breezy and i'm just gonna use a small beauty blender i'm going to rub it all in here so this concealer like it hasn't really settled yet so it gives you enough time to still be able to set it with a pressed powder if that's what you like to do with your concealer so i am kind of liking the concealer i'm still going to press it down just a little bit i do like this concealer all right so i'm just gonna go over my nose typically do get oily in my t-zone and then a lot like in the size of my nose look at the creasing in my eyelids all right so now that it looks like i should have used that kosas powder as my foundation i'm gonna take a powder brush and this is by elf seriously one of the best powder or makeup brushes i have ever purchased i've had this for such a long time and it washes so well you can't really see because i already put powder but if you see that side after so many years of owning this it's a good powder brush 
I typically don't put any makeup in my actual neck besides the fact that I'm wearing a shirt that it doesn't show too much of my chest I'm not too worried about it typically don't bring it down primarily just because I don't want that area to break out so I brought out my MAC paint pot in the shade groundwork the color that it's a little bit on the darker taupey side so I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and this is a blending brush by Urban Decay branding is all worn off but it's seriously a good brush so I'm just gonna take some of that and then just um, concentrate it like in the outer ends I did already put powder in my actual eyelids on top of the concealer that I had on so I'm not really going to use this color as a primer but more so darken up the crease so in this blending brush and we're gonna just take it on the ends and dab it and I also brought it up to my crease dabbing in the ends and then just blending. If you have any good paint pots that you like, let me know. I have this one and then I have another color. I used to have the oh so popular soft ochre, but it really didn't work for me. So I just kind of have to give up on it. I am going to be using my Too Faced Pretty Rich palette. This palette is one of my new palettes and I love the color scheme here. I am wearing navy and then I have like a red stripe on the sides. So I am thinking I want to use maybe now showing you the palette in the orientation that you would actually see it this second row right here is kind of speaking to me especially this color right here called um, princess cuts but then also to this row right here so i'm just going to take a blending brush this is my bomb cosmetics dual ended brush i used to have a pretty graphic but obviously i've been using it for so many years that it has worn off i'm gonna take the color called it's cashmere so this second one right here then i'm going to put it over top brown work paint pots this color is so pretty this color in the pan looks more brown but it is like a more of a bordeaux on the actual eyelid I will say like doing my makeup in these little makeup mirrors is so cool because if I'm not 100% happy with my makeup, it was through a small mirror as opposed to a giant mirror. So I'm not going to be too harsh on myself, but so far, even though we're a little bit conflicted with the shades of the actual foundation and then the concealer, it doesn't look terrible to be honest. It does look more on the natural side compared to the full coverage and that I love. So I'm going to pinch this a little bit and then whatever is there i'm just going to take it underneath pretty like not strategic at all pretty messy just to kind of diffuse those ends a little bit more i'm actually just going to stay with that row and i'm going to do the don't care at all that third color right there don't care at all that color is a shimmer and it's a very patch so i'm just going to take my ring finger gently because it pulls a lot of product like if you see a lot of product oh yeah i kind of like this color too the highly selective okay change my mind <laughs> i'm gonna use this color called highly selective i'm gonna put that in my outer end also with my finger but now that i use my ring finger for the color i'm gonna use my middle finger and i'm just going to dab it in the ends so pretty look at that this is beautiful it's like a starting to look like a mauvey rose kind of eye look actually i'm gonna put this all over the lid and then since I do have the don't care it at all on my finger, I'm just going to put that in the center. But still working with that highly selective color, just bringing it all the way in to the, to fill the lid. All right, so there is my eyeshadow all over the lid. And again, I'm going to go ahead and use this so I won't waste it and just put it in the center. I'm going to take whatever is left of highly selective on my finger to blend in that don't care it color with what I already had. It actually didn't have fallout. I found whenever I do the application of eyeshadows with my fingers, I can control the fallout. So I didn't have too much, but I did have an eyelash. So I think that's where I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do anything on my lower lash line, but here is what the eyeshadow looks like all right so i'm gonna put my palette away then we're just gonna come to finish the makeup so i actually didn't bring any brow products with me so we're gonna skip the brows for now and then just continue on so i'm gonna do my sales booster xl by lancome as my lash primer i'm gonna let that get tacky just a little bit and then I am going to come in with bronzer and just, um, wait, do I need bronzer? I kind of don't need bronzer just because my actual foundation color that I used today is still a little bit darker. I'll debate on that one. 
while I am figuring that part out, I'm just gonna go ahead and take some, some highlight from my Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold. I'm gonna use this center rosy color. This one is called Rose Gold number two. This palette itself is no longer available, so I'm not gonna be able to link it down below. And all I'm using is that other side of the It Cosmetics brush. So just dabbing it on here, just like that. And then just gonna take some of that on the nose over the cupid's bow just whatever was left i don't want a highlighted lip either so there is that very nice nothing in the inner corner should i put something in the inner corner i'm going to take the other end of my the bomb cosmetics brush and still that same color i'm going to dab it in there and i'm going to put this in my inner corner just there not so much to be a blinding highlight so i'm not too worried about it not being of a deeper kind of color these makeup eraser claws are awesome for blush i'm going to use my quad this is the ambient by hourglass this is a blush quad that it's no longer available for purchase i'm going to mix these two right here this would be strove blush in brilliant nude and strove blush in lucid glow so these two on this side so i'm going to take this it cosmetics flawless brush this is number 227 and to be quite honest these are the two that i use more often in this whole palette so i kind of went heavy right here so now i kind of feel like i gotta match it a little bit I'm grabbing the foundation brush going over top just a tad bit going back with the blush brush erase it take my powder brush going over top Yeah, whatevs. I'm gonna go with the Benefit Their Real Mascara. This one used to be one of my favorites whenever I was getting into the makeup world, but I think I've discovered others, but still I do have it in my collection. So going to use it. This bronzer smells like coffee. <laughs> so that's all I'm smelling right now, getting high on the Jaclyn Cosmetics Sun Beth Bronzer. So this mascara will separate your lashes so if that's something you're looking for it's a good mascara for that purpose but i don't have a lot a lot of lashes so i have to build up the mascara to where it almost looks even I'm trying to fix that tail and it can't clump a little bit too so i didn't really have too many topics that i wanted to talk about today i more so just wanted to try that foundation and then i guess i was bummed about my target experience today it did get cute clothes though and i hope it fits one of the brands at target that i like a lot for clothing is that brand a new day i find that that brand has a lot of great quality staple pieces that you can have in your wardrobe and it's not one that has loud prints but i did want to ask if you do work out often do you use a fitness journal or to use just like a mobile app to keep track of everything or just like a separate notebook if you're into pilates cassie by blog pilates she has a line at target and she has a 12 week fitness journal that i was kind of interested in but i saw on amazon that the version that she had before which is called 90 day fitness journal i think they're not dated by year so i can technically use that other one except the one at target was a uh, bounded cover book or as the one on amazon was a spiral book if you've tried either or if you have a preference on a fitness journal let me know which one is the one that you like i'm kind of leaning towards getting the actual book that is available on amazon because it was five dollars cheaper now grant the one that was at target it did come with a pen and it also came with a measuring tape which i have a measuring tape with me that looks just like it too i try to grab it i have my little makeup bag that i have in my purse all the time so it comes with a little measuring tape like this in a gold color which is cute but again i already have that one i don't necessarily need another one so um i was kind of debating but i think i'm gonna go ahead and order the one from amazon i'm gonna link it down below just in case you are looking for one so even though i set my under eye if i look up you'll see some creases already so i don't know if the formula in itself is a little bit heavy so that 
is kind of a bummer. Just that same sponge that I used to set that powder. Just gonna go over top and try to blend it. So I'm just gonna take whatever is left on the brush and then go on the bottom lashes just slightly. I don't do any heavy mascara down here and then because I didn't put any eyeshadow, I do want to make sure that we have something going on in the lower lash. I'm gonna take my mini Charlotte Tilbury eye smudge brush and in the corner up here, I got a little bit of mascara so I'm just gonna flake that off. It should be dry. Actually, it's not 100% dry. It's still there but I'm okay with that. On the other side, clean up. I treat this brush like a little makeup eraser like on my eyelid. It's not perfect but it works. Let me do a little quick crimp of eyelashes using my Shiseido lash curler. You see the lashes they kind of separate but they're a little bit clumpy and then I have one over here that's driving me nuts. Let me see if I can bring it up. I have a lash over here that's kind of man down. <laughs> Gonna go do my brows and then I'll be back with a lip combo. So hang tight. I'm back and um, I actually was looking for a different brow product. It was a pencil that I have no idea where it's at. So I did use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Pomade in the shade Chocolate and then just trying to brush it out. So it doesn't look too, too off, but it's a little bit darker than what I actually wanted for this look also by the way looking at the actual foundation in different lighting it doesn't look bad so i think it's one of those and that needs to warm up to your skin and um like if you can see right around here i only have the actual foundation and the setting powder by kosas whereas over here i have the blush the highlight and also the concealer over top the foundation so it doesn't look too bad right around here and then I guess this side too, you can kind of see. So it doesn't look bad. Um, I, I think I kind of like it now that it's warming up to my skin. Or at least I think that's what it's doing. It does say that it is skin tone evening. Evens out skin tone. Hmm. So I think um, it's still a little bit too dark. It just a tad bit, maybe like a shade dark compared to my actual neck, but it doesn't look too bad. As far as the concealer is concerned, it actually looks fine. It doesn't look too, too bad, but the foundation is actually what is impressing me the most. Starting off with the application, I didn't think I was gonna be a fan, but I might just like it. I'm just gonna grab my Pillow Talk liner by Charlotte Tilbury and it's actually raining. So I did wanna bring up really quickly the new collections that Louis Vuitton is launching. Like they have this beautiful iridescent denim. I'm gonna pop a picture here in the screen, but I think I like it. And then I also did see a Capucines in this oil slick hardware that I think looks stunning. So I don't know, I feel like the Capucines is calling my name more and more, even more so than a Chanel and that's that. It is around the $8,000 price point or a little bit over after tax out the door, which I think you can get a medium classic flap for around that price or even a small classic flap. Um, so I don't know if I will ever get a Chanel this year. I am kind of aiming to, but I don't know. I might get one that is discontinued. Again, I am not too sure. And that rain is really coming down hard. If there's any collections that you are excited about from Louis Vuitton, let me know what those are. I am excited to see um, what they're gonna bring out in the Speedies. And I also do wanna pick up just a classic Speedy. And then two, for some reason, the Neverfull and the P PM size is really, really calling my name. I don't know if that particular size is going to be discontinued because they only have two, the monogram and a Damir Azor, and they're often out of stock compared to the other ones. I'm wondering if they're gonna discontinue it, but the Azor is really calling my attention. If you do have the number four in the PM size, let me know what your experience is. I kind of feel like because it is not that different in price, a lot of people just go on with a medium size or the MM never full. But at the same time, the sizes are too drastic that they are like two different bags essentially. So I don't want to fall into that hole. Well, I might as well get the big one um, with the Damir Azor. I feel like the PM size is different enough and something that I don't already have in my collection, obviously, to the point that I will really like it and enjoy it. But I am hoping that... I kind of got lipstick on my makeup bag. <laughs> 
I am hoping that I'm gonna love it. Feel that I am gonna be having a blast with that one because it's gonna be higher up in my torso and I'm not gonna get a lot of denim transfer the way I would if I go with the Jamir Azor in the MM size. Gotta see if I do run into it in store. So I didn't even say I have the Charlotte Tilbury Chinese New Year for 2023 lipstick in the shade Blossom Red, one of my favorite reds, but I'm not gonna cover it all completely or maybe I should, it doesn't look bad. My shirt has a red stripe here, so I kind of wanted to tone it down with the color Bitch Perfect, but I feel like it's not terrible, so I might as well fill it in completely with this lipstick. Also too, like my lip line right here is different than this side. Kind of thought about doing like filler, but I don't know how I feel about doing filler. So pretty. Literally one of my most favorite lipsticks within my collection. So um, there is the look. Very quickly finishing off my whole train of thought with my lips is um, filler. Like I don't know if I want filler. I'm kind of scared of just doing it on one side and then just having, you know, that swelling that happens and not reducing to that perfect size to kind of even out my lips on both ends. If you've done filler in your lips, let me know what your experience is. I kind of feel like, you know, whenever there is that whole side effects warning list in everything, I always feel like I'm going to fall on that side of the experience with almost everything like oh yeah like kind of like it would totally be my luck that that such and such and such happens to me um on a more serious note i did see i don't know her name i i think she's primarily on instagram i don't know if it was diaspora or if it was botox but she had a severe reaction to it to where one of her eyes is literally um changing size i don't know what it's called i'm gonna try really hard to find her i had found that story in my um you know your for you page on instagram where a lot of random stuff just pop up so i'm gonna try to look her up again and see if i can share that story because i'm like in the fence of whether or not i I do want to do that for my lips because also heard that Botox over time it travels I don't know I've never done it if you have let me know if you have an experience to let me know for sure I'm gonna link down all the products that I spoke about today including my uh $400 wipes well they weren't 400 they were 15 dollars instead of eight the clothing items that i did get if it turns out that they fit just fine and i am happy with that then i am not going to do another trip to target which is around the corner from my house literally to go get the refund for the wet wipes you know half the price but if i do have to go back to target to exchange one of those clothing pieces and obviously i'll take it with me but other than that i think i'm just going to come to target Terms to the fact that they put the sticker way too early and this barcode was not already reflecting that discounted price. I mean, it is what it is. If you have any questions, let me know what that is down below. Again, I'm going to try to link all the product information down below. Most importantly, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.